After leaving Ireland, our next destination was to go to Bedell, England in Yorkshire. This was a two-day trip. We started by taking a train from Galway to Belfast, a distance of 235 miles, switching trains in Dublin on the way. This is shown by the red line. We then took a ferry, which was more like a small cruise ship, to carry on Scotland. This is shown by the yellow line. It was about 65 miles across the North Sea. We spent a night in Carrion and then took a bus to Glasgow the next morning. This is shown by the blue line. Upon arriving, we quickly walked to the train station and just barely made the train as it left for Manchester, England. This is shown on the red line. We rented a car in Manchester and drove to Bedell, shown by the green line. We arrived at this apartment in the country outside of Bedell. Why did we go to Bedell? Bedell was a good central location to tour Yorkshire from, and it was a great place to stay for four nights. We primarily spent our time in Yorkshire because of these books. All Creatures Great and Small, All Things Bright and Beautiful, All Things Wise and Wonderful, The Lord God Made Them All, James Harriet's Yorkshire, and later, The Yorkshire Vet by Peter Wright. In case you are not familiar with these books, they are all about a vet with a pen name of James Harriet and his stories about his work with the animals. For me, they are really very humorous love stories. James's love for the animals, the people in Yorkshire, and the country of Yorkshire. Besides the books, there have been two movies made based on the books and two different TV series. The Dell is located just east of the Yorkshire Dales National Park. Both live and dead pheasants were a very common sight around Yorkshire. A lot of them were roadkill. I saw a lot of pheasants growing up on the farm in Minnesota, but rarely see them anymore. If you have seen the movie Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, starring Kevin Costner, these waterfalls will be familiar. They are Esgard Falls. Little John knocked Robin Hood into the falls as they met on a narrow log crossing the falls. Most of the film was filmed in the Yorkshire Dales. The Yorkshire Dales are located about 120 miles north of Sherwood Forest and a little bit west. We are in the town of Ash Creek, which was a main shooting location for the first TV series of All Creatures Great and Small, mostly filmed in 1978 to 1980. The original BBC series was mostly filmed in Ash Creek. You can still visit the King's Arms, which became the Drover's Arms in the show, just over the road from the veterinary surgery Skilldale House, now a B&B &B boarding the same name. Other locations, including Swaledale, Ark and Garthdale, and Langthwaite. Inside, the King's Arms, used as the Drovers. There are a lot of pictures of the actors used in the first TV series.
The most important building was Skilldale House, which housed the vet practice and where James and later James, Helen and family, two children, lived for several years. This building was used for the first TV series. We are passing through the village of Hardrow, a filming location for the TV series, and the Green Dragon Pub was a popular place for James to unwind and to hike to Hardrow Falls behind the pub. The inside of the pub was used for the TV series. The Wensleydale Heifer, located in West Minton, was a frequent place for James and Harriet to stay. We are at Air Force Waterfall, the most famous of the Lake District waterfalls. The main falls is 70 feet high. Beatrice Potter was an English writer, illustrator, natural scientist, and conservationist. Her first published work was The Tales of Peter Rabbit in 1902. Her books have sold over 250 million copies. Peter Rabbit was the first fictional character to be made into a patented stuffed animal. She is largely responsible for the establishment of Lake District National Park, the largest national park in England, through her donations of land and money. We had tickets still top farm home, but because of a road closure, we were unable to get there. We did get to the nearby town of Bower and Wonderwear, home of the Beatrice Potter Museum. Coming up is the Rebelhead Viaduct. We had a much longer look at this interesting historical railroad bridge than we wanted to. After stopping to take a picture of it, our car, a rented Mercedes, locked us in the car. We could not open a window, start the car, or open a door. It is a complicated story but we were locked in for about one and one half hours. By the time we finally were told how to solve the problem, a tire went flat and it had no spare. After waiting for over six more hours for help to arrive, we were helped by a nearby farmer and was able to get back to Bedell. We had to spend the next day buying a tire, which took away our plans for that day, which was to visit the Yorkshire coast and Hadrian's Wall. This was our only major problem on our 70 day trip. So we are thankful we did not have more problems. Fulton Castle was built between 1378 to 1399 by Richard I. It is located near Wensleydale. It was damaged in the English Civil War, but much of it has survived. It has never been sold and is still owned by the Scope family. We did not go into it. Welcome to Grassington, the village of the second TV series of All Creatures Great and Small was filmed. The building used for Skilldale House. The Devonshire, the site of the Dover Arms Pub. 30 years after the BBC aired its final episode of the hugely popular Yorkshire Dales based veterinary series All Creatures Great and Small, a whole new series arrived on our screens in 2020 and was an immediate hit. The new series continues to bring the stories of James Harriet to life and the colorful ensemble of farmers, animals, and townsfolk living in the Yorkshire Dales in the 1940s. It has seen Grassington regularly turned into frictional Darby. The Devonshire Inn took over for the outside of Dover's while the Green Dragon Inn in Hardrow was used for the inside. The building, now called Skilldale Hall, which is now a B&B, &B, was used for the outside of Skilldale House. It was announced in 2024 that it has commissioned two new series, and filming for Series 5 started in October. My father first introduced me to the book, All Creatures Great and Small, and now my children and grandchildren are enjoying the books and shows. Four generations of enjoying James Harriet's stories. How many more will follow?
One thing we always enjoy, seeing the world's greatest dog, Shetland Sheepdog, or Sheltie. Ruth and Joanne playing with one in Grassington. Over 900 years old, Skipton Castle is one of the best preserved and most complete castles in England. Skipton Castle is a medieval castle in Skipton, North Yorkshire, England. It was built in 1090 by Robert D. Rennell, a Norman baron, and has been preserved for over 931 years. In 1310, King Edward II granted the castle to Lord Clifford. The Civil War siege of 1642 to 1645. On 21st December 1645, this very gateway witnessed a remarkable sight. The massive gates, which had remained closed against the Roundhead besiegers for three years, were thrown open, and out of the castle, through the ranks of the enemy, rode Sir John Mallory at the head of his staunch garrison. The long siege had failed to take Skipton Castle. It held out for the king until it was the last resisting castle in the north. In the circumstances, wise counsels prevailed and the parliamentary roundhead forces agreed to most honorable terms for surrender. The royal garrison marched away down Skipton High Street with colors flying, trumpets sounding, drums beating, matches lighted on both ends, and bullets in their mouths. Every trooper and every foot soldier with three charges of powder and was permitted to disperse with safe conduct passes. been to two make-believe towns of Darby in Ashcree and Grassington. Now it is time to go to the real thing, the real Darby. Darby itself is not real. The actual town where Skilldale House was, which was actually Kirkgate, is in the city of Thirst. So let's take a tour of Thirst. Around 1740, the Dow's House later changed to the Three Tunes adapted for use as a coaching inn. At that time, it was Thirst's only coaching inn and had a monopoly for many years. The London, Edinburgh, Newcastle, and Darlington coaches all used the three tunes for bed and breakfast. The original mangers, stalls, and hayloft for the horses may still be seen at the yard. We spent two wonderful nights at this room at the Three Tunes Hotel. James and his wife Helen had several dates at this theater. Until 1939, the world of James Harriet Visitor Center on Kirkgate was a residence of various local doctors. It was then taken over by Donald Sinclair, a.k.a. Siegfried Farnham, as his veterinary practice. In 1940, he was joined by Alf Wright, whose pen name was James Harriet. James lived here until 1953 when he moved with his wife and two children into a house. James lived in the town for 55 years until his death in 1955. You may not be ready for this. The man who would become the world's most famous vet and synonymous with Yorkshire would not have been able to play cricket a game he loved for his adopted country. He was not born in Yorkshire. The first photograph of James on the left. The real James Harriet was in fact a Scotsman by way of County Durham, born James Alfred Wright in Sunderland on 3rd October 1916, the only child of Hannah and James Henry White. Although he shared with his father and his own son a lifelong passion for Sunderland Football Club, 
eventually becoming life president. The new Sunderland Stadium of Light has a suite named in his honor. The young Alfred was raised in Glasgow, where his parents moved before he was born. Elf graduated from Glasgow at the height of the Depression on 14th December 1939, and the young man might have had visions of a life caring for small animals in a nice, squeaky, clean environment. This was not exactly how things were to turn out. Instead, at a time when there were 80 applicants for every post, Elf first worked for a few months at a practice in Sunderland, half of the time unpaid, before accepting a position in June 1940 as assistant to Donald Sinclair at his practice in Thirsk. Elf quickly learned that this was overwhelmingly a large animal practice, and the daily working environment of a North Riding vet consisted mostly of tending to pigs, sheep, cattle, and horses in the wind and the rain, as often as not knee-deep in mud. Donald Sinclair could never have imagined as he left this building to stroll down Kirkgate into Thirst Marketplace that late spring morning in 1940 that he was embarking upon an historic journey. But little did he know that the brief and advertisement which he had carefully prepared the night previously for the veterinary record in which he was now about to slip into the Red Victorian post box would have such extraordinary implication for his own life and so touch those of millions of people across the globe. Donald had been in practice at Thirst for two years himself when he took his famous walk. He had arrived with his belongings stowed in the back of a glorious Lagoda where he had worked as an advisor to the Ministry of Agriculture. Previously, there had been a spell working in Edinburgh in which Donald had qualified as a new vet in 1933 at the Royal Veterinary College. An ambitious as well as glamorously handsome and legendary charming young man, Donald was attracted to thirst by the promise of leading his own practice. Such was the workload at Kirkgate, however, that even the occasional help of Brother Brian left the practice stretched. So Donald is famous for assisting at the birth of James Harriet, but Donald was a unique character in his own right. How far the real Siegfried actually resembled the Siegfried on the page and the screen is another thing. Physically, Donald was a tall, elegant, dashingly handsome man with a mustache found in the books. The question of Siegfried's all-important personality is less clear. Some of those closest to Donald Sinclair, family, friends, even Donald himself, have felt that the character was overplayed, both in print and on the screen. Others have felt that such was Donald's uniqueness, quite the opposite was true, and that he may even have been underplayed. Elf White's own son, who worked alongside Donald for over 20 years, describes a real Siegfried as an amazingly larger-than-life personality who has left a vast wealth of fond memories for all the people fortunate to have worked with him. As with Siegfried, Donald's great love was horses, and his reputation as an equine specialist preceded him. For nearly 40 years, he was a racecourse veterinary surgeon at Thirsk, and less formally attended to the welfare of horses at the annual Topcliffe Fair. Hunting was an early passion, and Donald rode with his own pack of harriers. Perhaps less obvious in a country vet was Donald's lifelong fascination with racing pigeons, an interest which deepened it in later life. As with horses, Donald's reputation as a pigeon specialist spread, attracting the attention of pigeon fanciers far and wide. This led to an increased specialization towards the end of his career, at some small expense to his beloved equine work. This was not entirely regretted. Working with horses can be dangerous, and Jim White recalls Donald telling him with characteristic humor and charm that pigeons don't kick. Siegfried Farnham is remembered as probably the best-loved James Harriet character. Donald Sinclair is remembered by those who knew him professionally and personally as a man who lived a full life, a devoted family man of great talent, humor, warmth, charm, and humility. If there are mistakes to be made, I have made them. He died in 1995, just a few months after the friend and partner whose seeds of fame he helped to sow that spring day long ago. When Elf White arrived at Thirst, Donald's younger brother Brian was a student vet, and Elf was to base his character, the young and mischievous Tristan Farnan, on Brian. After a few mishaps, very Tristan, Brian also went on to graduate from the Royal Veterinary College in Edinburgh in 1943 before joining the Army Veterinary Corps in India. 
On demobilization, he joined the Ministry of Agricultural Sterility Advisory Service in Inverness. From 1950 until his retirement, he worked at the Veterinary Investigation Center at Leeds, eventually becoming head of the center. Brian Sinclair was especially close to Elf White and is remembered for his wonderful sense of fun. Whilst Elf and Donald were in their own ways very private men, Brian reveled in the public eye and became a regular and popular visitor to the United States, appearing on television and lecturing at veterinary schools all over the country. He died in 1988. One month and two days before the bombing of Pearl Harbor, on November 5, 1941, Alf and Joan were married in his church. It is about three blocks down the street from Skildale House. 